Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Making Hope Happen series. I'm Lori Mage, and this is day 58 in the 100 day challenge where I'm stacking my energy, work, and love goals and sharing 100 of my favorite tools, tips, and ideas to help you and me more effectively navigate change, master our transitions, and make our dreams come true. Today's topic, psychological flexibility and leadership. Really quickly to set the stage, Let's revisit the three models that we've come back to again and again and again for a visual representation of what change might look like in our lives and the lives of those that we lead and serve. Here, we've got the hero's journey, which is the three part monomyth discovered and shared by Joseph Campbell. Here we're living in our normal, comfortable world when a call to the adventure occurs. This could be an opportunity to take a new job or go to school to have a child, or maybe start a business. Sometimes our hero's adventures are a quiet nudge from the universe where we are called to make a choice to enter into the unknown. And other times the call to the adventure feels like a shove, you know, where it seems as if the choice has been made for us. Either way, the hero's journey is often filled with overwhelming feelings of uncertainty, doubt, and fear. And at the exact same time, the adventure holds the potential for excitement and joy and happiness. So why do we resist the call when there is the potential for joy and happiness? Well, the simple answer is because we're human. It's our instinct to avoid pain and discomfort no matter what, even if it's good for us to pursue it. It's a natural biological and psychological reaction to the unknown. Now let's revisit the Bridges model of transitions. Now this model was created to help leaders inside of organizations to better understand and support the needs of their team members when a change has been announced and behaviors and ways of operating must change. This could be the introduction of a new product, procedure, or a policy. Maybe it's a restructuring of a team or department, maybe some new technology, new team members, a new leader, maybe a merger or a business initiative, for example. Now, similar to the hero's journey, when change is announced, it can ignite fear, doubt, and uncertainty, as well as excitement, joy, and happiness. And what is the natural, normal reaction of most, most people when change is announced? Yeah, danger, 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 run! Like, protect yourself, you know? It's a normal reaction. Let's take a look at this third model now. Here we have the hope model. And the hope model is a great way to visualize how change can take place in our personal and also our professional lives. We hope for a better future by creating compelling goals that are meaningful, challenging, but also doable. And we foster a belief and an expectation in ourselves and those around us to achieve what we want to achieve. And then we develop a high tolerance for experimenting, knowing that we will have to embark on multiple pathways to close the gap between where we are and where we want to be. Again, even if we can see a future that can be better than the present, we will still resist action. Why? Because fear, doubt, and uncertainty will undoubtedly be present. The hope model requires us to take risks, to try new things, and doing that creates fear and anxiety. What if we actually can't do this? Our thoughts that run through your mind. I mean, what will my friends think of me if I go out and try this or I succeed at it or I don't succeed at it? What if I, you know, is there a chance that I'll lose my job or my house if I try to do this and it doesn't work? Super scary stuff comes up in our minds when we think about going after what we want to achieve in our lives. So if we want to get better at leading ourselves and others through change, we need to develop what researchers call psychological flexibility. Psychological flexibility is the ability to stay in full contact with the present moment, regardless of unpleasant thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations that might show up and consciously choose to change, adapt, and or persist based on the situation in your own personal values and goals. To be clear, psychological flexibility is not ignoring the unpleasant thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations that come up when change is announced or when uncertainty and fear or doubt is present. Rather, it's about accepting that these are natural parts of being a human being and seeing them as actually a requirement for living and leading a rich and meaningful life. The acceptance of all these unpleasant thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations showing up is critical because the research shows that if we try to get rid of those difficult thoughts and emotions, 
they only increase the level of frequency and strength and the duration of them. In this particular case, it seems that the saying, what we resist persists, is actually scientifically true. In other words, it's having the ability to accept our unpleasant thoughts, feelings, or bodily sensations and not let them hijack our behaviors, which leads us to the second part of the definition. We have to embrace what we're experiencing in order to move towards our personal values and goals. Essentially, if we want to live and lead a meaningful life and do work that matters to us, we have to feel the fear and do it anyways. A personal example here. If I want to move towards having my own coaching business and YouTube channel, I will most definitely need to accept difficult thoughts, difficult emotions, unpleasant bodily sensations as part of my journey. Just doing these videos caused me to sweat in places I didn't know I could sweat and feel extreme levels of fear that I didn't know I could feel. Thinking about how I'm actually going to make money doing this creates worry, doubt, and anxiety. I mean, I have a mortgage, I have student loan debt, and a spouse counting on me to provide for a family. And if I let those things consume me, or if I try to resist them, I would not be able to move forward in the directions of my dreams and goals. And I wouldn't be able to share my gifts and passions with others in the world who might find value from them in videos like these. Another thing to bring up here that I think would be valuable is the opposite of psychological flexibility, which is called experiential avoidance. Now, experiential avoidance, it's this tendency to avoid unpleasant thoughts and feelings, even when doing so creates problems for us. An example of this would be someone who has the thought that they're stupid and they then avoid situations that might embarrass them, like maybe given a presentation at work or asking someone out on a date. Now, although this strategy reduces anxiety and provides relief in the moment, it also narrows their options for life. Not only that, but the research has shown that experiential avoidance, it's associated with depression, substance abuse, poor work performance, and chronic stress. Conversely, becoming more psychologically flexible allows people to cope with life more effectively and see challenge and uncomfortable emotions as a natural byproduct or even a feature of living a deeply fulfilling and meaningful life. As you can see, there are lots of benefits to increasing our ability to practice and demonstrate psychological flexibility in our lives and fostering it in others' lives as parents, friends, teachers, coaches, and leaders. Going after anything meaningful in our lives or embracing any kind of change that impacts our values will create fear and doubt. It's part of being human. It's part of being alive. If it didn't matter to you, you wouldn't feel those uncomfortable feelings. It's just the fact that it matters to you. For example, let's say you or your child is graduating from high school this year. Now, this young person has been given an opportunity to play soccer at a four-year university, but the school's over 2,000 miles away in a city four times the size of their hometown. Now, that means that they won't be able to see their family or friends anytime they want like they have in the past. They won't know even where to go get a burger or gas for their car, if they have a car even. What if they get lost or they get a flat tire? What if... The person they've been dating for the last three years doesn't want to do the long distance thing and wants to break up. Or what if they can't make friends or they flunk out of school? Now, as parents, psychological flexibility is being able to hold the space without judgment for your kid to experience and accept the negative emotions that they're experiencing without being wrong. So one, they can learn the skill of psychological flexibility by having you model it for them. And two, with your support and encouragement, they can continue to explore and clarify their own personal values and personal goals and make a decision on their own about their future and the future they want to create for themselves. Now, doing this will help build their confidence and their commitment long term while also reducing the negative outcomes of experiential avoidance like we talked about earlier, things like depression, substance abuse, and poor school performance. It's easier said than done. I mean, who wants to see their kid in pain and who wants to see their kid give up on their dreams and goals because they're scared? The same is true when we find ourselves supporting our friends or people we lead and coach at work, at church, or in other social settings that we belong to. Let's take a look now at a work example. Let's say your company has just announced a huge organizational restructuring and not a single team inside the organization will not be impacted by this change. Everybody will be impacted. And in the process, 12 people were assigned to 
to new divisions and three people were let go. Now, when you think about that scenario, what do you think most people are going to feel from this announcement? Fear, anxiety, doubt, right? Again, that's the natural, normal human response to almost any kind of change. You know, it's run, avoid, protect yourself, danger, danger, danger. Those who are skilled, which is the key point to emphasize here, psychological flexibility is a skill. It's not a personality trait or a character flaw. It's a skill that can be developed. And some of us were lucky enough to have great modeling of the skill growing up. So we have like 20 years of practice with it and others of us, not so lucky. We didn't have anyone modeling it. We had most of our family members and friends demonstrating experiential avoidance. So please keep that in mind when you're leading yourself and others through change. Okay, back to the work scenario. Those who are skilled at psychological flexibility will be able to stay fully connected to the present moment, regardless of the unpleasant feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations that might be showing up for them, including sweaty palms, feeling like you're going to throw up, or tears welting up in your eyes. You'll still be able to stay connected fully to the present moment. Now, psychological flexibility, again, it's not about not having those experiences, but rather it's about embracing them as normal, not resisting them and not being consumed by them either. Individuals that are skilled at psychological flexibility are able to witness and accept unpleasant thoughts and feelings. And they're also able to consciously choose how they want to move forward based on the situation and their personal values and goals. Again, as a leader of self and others, uncomfortable and unpleasant feelings are part of the process. They're part of being alive. They're part of doing meaningful work and trying to rush through these unpleasant feelings of others or avoiding them altogether, also known as experiential avoidance, like we talked about earlier, it's going to create more problems for you and your team in the long run. Psychological flexibility is the ability to stay in full contact with the present moment, regardless of the unpleasant thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations, and consciously choose to change, adapt, or persist based on the situation and your personal values and goals. All of this reminds me of Viktor Frankl and his quote that says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power, our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Well, that's it for day 58, psychological flexibility and leadership. I don't know about you, but looking at change and going after our dreams and goals through this lens of psychological flexibility, along with the three models again, has really helped me feel empowered and normal for feeling the way I do at times. I hope you got just as much value as me today. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below and share this video with others you think the message would help and support. I'm on a mission to help build a happier, healthier, more loving and helpful world one person at a time. And it's my hope that these videos will support you in being and becoming what you're capable of being, who you want to be and creating a life that you absolutely freaking love. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sharing. Have an awesome day and I will see you tomorrow.